please bring this drink to Jeremy. And I'm gonna push submit task. AI and ML is the one technology that we're not seeing being used in robotics, right? We're seeing it being used everywhere else. It's being used in finance, it's being used in medical. Those industries can produce tons of data that feed into machine learning databases. What we're trying to do with robotics is the same thing, but we just don't have any data. There's no robots doing stuff that can produce enough data for navigation, for making decisions, and also the moral conversations too, right? Like, what if a robot were to, or a self-driving car were to make a decision between hitting one person or hitting an old person versus a young person? These conversations are, are uh, need to be had. So we're not saying that Exosphere is going to make those decisions, but what we can do to start and to kick off um, AI and ML in, uh, in robotics is to start producing data. And to do that, our most powerful computer we have is our brain, right? Here we have software and then we have some hardware and we have a ton of ideas. But way over here is AI. Right? This is autonomous robots doing amazing things. And there's a big chasm here for us to be able to get to this stage. All these robot companies are trying to achieve this and they're testing AI in the lab. Even though there's a little bit of work being done in this space, it's very isolated. And what's missing is real world scenarios, real world data, real world ideas of what robots should be doing. And what we gotta do is we have to fill this in with data, right? We have to fill it in with ideas. We have to fill it in with examples. We have to fill this in with all of the use cases, with all of the non-simulated, like real world stuff. We need to fill in how ideas become tasks, which move us towards AI. And to do that, we're using humans to assist AI. One of the most important things that I think that people are starting to realize when, when you start talking about Exosphere is that AI is supposed to replace jobs, but what if people can control those robots all around the world and keep their jobs? Maybe one person can control 10 robots in 10 different Walmarts. It allows us in the short term, or maybe long term, while we move towards AI being autonomous, to allow robots to be controlled. So you have a robot, and you have a request. Okay, your request gets put into as a task. It gets pushed into Exosphere. A decision happens, and it publishes this to AI companies, which are partner companies of Synthium that are connected to Exosphere. And it also pushes it to humans, which we call HI. So on the HI network, are people like you and people on the forum and people who are gonna download the app. What'll happen is it'll prompt you and say, here's a task. Who has the most confidence they can complete this task? And based upon task rating, one of either the human or the AI will pick that up and control the robot to perform that task. Whoever completes that task gets rewarded. We're putting humans and AI almost against each other, but at the same time working with each other. As the robot is being controlled, all of the data is being stored in a database. And that database can be queried by these AI companies. And when they run simulations, they can reproduce this exact same scenario over and over and over again. The next time you go to ask a question for that robot, this AI system may have learned how to do that and navigate your home. It may have learned how to navigate and understand what it is that you're trying to do. And the more times you and everyone uses Exosphere and continues to train this database, the better the HI, the humans are gonna get at controlling robots, and the better AI will get at controlling robots because it really doesn't matter who's making the decision. The outcome is that the robot is performing some sort of task. And use case scenarios of this, right? You have these delivery robots that everyone keeps hearing about from Amazon, et cetera. And these delivery robots are supposed to drive down the street and they're supposed to have a little package in their back and they're supposed to bring this little package to some guy who's waiting for the package. But the thing is, in between him and the robot, are there's trees, there's other people, and there's all these obstacles in the way. And that's why we're not seeing these robots in real world environments. 
So what if this robot can get 90% to the destination, but then that other 10% it can't complete getting to? Well, with Exosphere, that robot can cry out and say, help, I'm stuck. A human can come in, control that robot, and take it over for that last final 10%. And we call that the 10% edge case. This is the trouble that robots are currently struggling with. So I think the next thing we can, we can do too is we can demonstrate um, how to connect a few different robots to Exosphere. So it doesn't matter what, uh, what type of robot it is, it'll work with anything. Here's a demonstration of that. Load arc. And I'm gonna add a camera. And then I'm gonna add a, a movement panel for the Roomba and connect the camera here. Okay, now we're gonna add the machine learning exosphere control to this. Now I'm going to ask the robot, I'm gonna say, please bring this drink to Jeremy. And I'm gonna push submit task. Okay, so now what just happened is this request has gone into exosphere. You can see here it's been picked up by Amin. He's now gonna be able to drive the robot and perform that specific task. So you can see off he goes. There we go. So now you can see that Jeremy's got his drink. When I go back to my desktop here, you can see it's asking me how well this task was completed. So was it, was it done satisfactory? I think so. I can answer that question. Uh, timely manner? Yeah, I think he went as fast as he could based upon the speed I did. And then, of course, the confidence and the accuracy of my description. So these answers that I've just provided have actually training an AI in a machine learning database, which is allowing these type of tasks to be executed again and again and again and start getting better at them. What we're doing is something new as an ideology that is changing how we're actually working with robotics. And we're tapping into the power of the human brain versus trying to depend solely on just the computer. Because our AI uses reinforcement learning, we also use this rating system to fuel and feed the reinforcement portion of the machine learning database, as well as we use this rating system to be able to qualify humans. We set up something called the training playground. So on the website for Synthium, under Products and Exosphere, you'll find the Exosphere and all the tasks that are currently loaded. Now these three tasks are always gonna be there because these are training tasks. And these tasks are special because they're marked internally inside of our system that every time you complete one of these tasks successfully and actually do it within a timely manner, you will increase your human task rating which allows companies to be able to choose you as a qualified user to control their warehousing robots or their towel delivery robots in a hotel or their medical delivery robots in a hospital. It doesn't matter what the robot is, the different level of rating is gonna qualify you to be able to control those robots. And if I were to load one of them up now, you'll see here that I'm controlling a robot that I'm supposed to park into the blue zone. I have the ability to use this joystick you can use the keyboard buttons and you can actually use a USB joystick if you plug it in as well. In my task I just completed, 31 second session has generated 463 machine vision samples for classification. What that means is our AI company partners can use the identified machine vision images that we've taken from the robot and they can classify them and classify objects and classify various interesting points within the image for navigation. And then you can relate those classified samples to the navigation decisions. So why did I turn left? Why did I turn right? What were my different decisions based on? And they're based on different images that are of interest for the navigation. These are very relevant statistics which will continue to grow as Exosphere gets used more and more. When you're completed your task, we left some information here for you so you can get some sense of what it is and how it works and some examples for it. You can see here that there's a bunch of research we've done to understand why this matters. I've talked to a lot of companies. The conversations resulted in to find out that 75% of their time was spent programming and building robots. And these are AI companies, yet they're spending 75% of their time programming or building robots to test algorithms. That's not their core competency. 
right? AI and ML organizations are creating custom simulated environments without real world scenarios. There's 17,000 robots connected to our system in the last couple months. We almost have a million robot connections in the last year. That's crazy. What do you want robots to do? How, do, how is a robot gonna change your life? How is a robot gonna help you age and navigate a home or cook a meal? All right, these are, these are questions I would to think of because right now in the age we're in and the ability to, uh, to make these decisions and embrace technology, we can start producing robots that can actually help us retire and help us age um, much better than any, anyone in the past has ever done because we can have robots doing things for us. We're in charge of that and we can make those decisions today. And that's what Exosphere is going to do and that's what it is doing right now inside of our lab, inside of our testing. The idea of putting humans and AI working together I think is the only way we're going to be able to overcome this techno technological chasm that we're experiencing at this point. And that's what Exosphere is. It doesn't matter what the, the task is. It really doesn't matter because the more information that we can use Exosphere for, the smarter we can get it. The more data we can build, the better it'll become. And then we'll become Synthium as a knowledge base of all the tasks that will power the robots of the future.